What's going on, guys and gals? My name's Sean, and if you landed here, you're watching Scar My Guitar. Now, what's up? It's good to see you back. Boy, today we got a good one, because today we're talking about budget guitars again. But not just modding guitars, I'm talking about cheap guitars for kids. You know, the ones they say are going to be great for your kids straight out of the box, and we all know they're not. Every one of them's going to need some kind of setup done to it, maybe some fret leveling, there might be sharp fret edges hanging the string up underneath it. All kind of stuff happens with those guitars. But I got a buddy that told me if I wanted to check out our kid's guitar, to look up the Licks Pro. So that's exactly what I did. And that's what we're about to look at. And this guy's right here on the table. It's a 30 inch Telecaster. It's called Licks Pro, L-Y-X Pro. I can't wait to get in the box. Let's flip it over and open it up. Let's crack this bad boy open. Man, that, that, that tape's so flimsy. I don't, I don't see how it makes it here every time. All right, let's see what's in this thing. Doesn't look like this one was a return. It's actually wrapped pretty. Boy, that's got to be the ugliest headstock. <laughs> Super light little guitar. See what we got in here. Huh? It's a baby telly. <laughs> it's actually really cool. Let's pull it out of the box and tune it up and see what it sounds like. Now if you're getting this for Junior, straight out of the box. He's not playing that. Alright, let's get it tuned up and check it out. It's the next day. I got so frustrated with this little thing last night, I threw it down and went to bed. Now here's the thing. It plays good, but the saddles on this bridge won't let it intonate. And watch this. Can you hear that? That's the string rolling around in the bridge. And it's on all of them. It's not just on that one. I'm not a fan of the three saddle bridge anyway. Every guitar you've ever heard me play have always been on the same setting. This one included. There's no tuning it with this bridge. This is the bridge pickup. It won't stay in tune. You can see where the neck is not flush in the pocket. That's not good. So I'm going to tell you this right now. Straight out of the box, you're not giving this to your kid. Not like this. You're not going to get the next Brad Paisley with this. Now I'm not the sharpest tack in the box, that's a fact. But at 3 o'clock in the morning, I said, man, we can make that thing awesome. And I bought these. 43 bucks. Fender American Standard Tuners. And you just heard how horrible it sounds, so I bought these. Hopefully that's gonna make a big difference, but we can't find out standing here talking about it, so that's gonna be enough flip flapping. Let's make it happen. Those are some cute little bolts, look at that. <laughs> Now here's another fun little game. You think this thing's got a hole in the neck pocket too that goes all the way through? It is a little thing, you think so? Put it in the comments now. So what's under here? Yep, giant hole. I mean, big old hole. <laughs> Look at that. The neck is in there pretty tight though. Look at that. Huh. Pretty easy to see why it wasn't in there flush. That's an easy fix. We'll do that now. Just take this file right here. Perfect little file. It's nice and flat and it's a metal file. So it's not really going to remove material. It's just going to flatten that out right there. I think we'll be okay now, hopefully. Yeah, it's pretty flat now. It's a pretty clean little neck pocket. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it dips down in the back. This guitar definitely could use a shim or something. I don't know why they make the neck pockets dip like that. Why don't they just route it flat? 
you can see that the saddles on the bridge here are extended all the way up where they're actually going to be digging into your hands too. Junior don't need that. Let's go ahead and strip the body first. Look, if you're cringing because I'm using this drill, every guitar factory on earth puts these together with air drills. You really need to stop. And if you think I'm fixing to rub the side of the, this guitar with any kind of pantyhose or anything, you're on the wrong channel. Let's see what we got here. Cheap ceramic pickup. Of course it is. You heard what it sounded like. Both of these were total duds. Now, I don't know why that's got all that chipping and it's all beat up in there like that. It's kind of weird. But being on the pit guard, no big deal. Look at the control cavity right here. There's a little bit of space here. I bet you we got a little surprise under here. Let's go see. Let's see what's under here. Yeah, look. They over-routed it. So they just glued that in there so they could have a place to screw. So I guess Fender ain't the only one over-routing pickup cavities, huh? There's the bridge. Now that'd be under the pick guard. You won't see it. So let's see what's under here and let's look at this pickup. See the magnet right there. This pickup's made a little weird for me. <laughs> We're going to clip these wires here to this pickup. Pull them on out of there. Now I know I could just put some more saddles in this and bridge would probably be okay, but. Now hang on just a dang minute. Sean, you see that bridge is trash. Why are you still trying to hang on to it? We're not going to hold on to it. We're going to jump right on Amazon right here just like this. We're going to grab this guy. It's going to be here by tomorrow. And bam, just like that, through the graces of YouTube, you didn't have to wait. Let's see what we got. Look, it comes in a cool case. Nice, huh? Let's get in this thing. Yeah, I'm thinking those are really cool. Now, we already know this is going to be too long for here, right? Because look at the difference in the size of the control plates. I'm the kind of guy that says we can make this work. And I don't know why they didn't do it this way. Here's what we'll do. We'll put one screw back in over here. We'll put one in over here. Put a screw in down here. you know where it's gonna be I'm using a mechanical pencil because they're lead small and it can be right up against the control plate there this thing has a 22 and 3 quarter inch scale so we're gonna have to do a little bit of operating on this thing to make it work well let's get to it for the next little part of this adventure we've got to kick a little sawdust up so I'm gonna clamp this body down nice and tight right here not wiggling around. Now this router bit has a one inch cutting depth as you can see and it also has the bearing on it and then it's a half an inch in diameter.
All right, one target down. Let's get the other one. Looks like 14 inch radius is pretty common on these cheap guitars. Now you can see these fret edges are super sharp. Definitely haven't been rounded over at all. They're sharp. And a lot of the frets aren't seated in there correctly. You see that one? Now you can see air underneath it, especially over there on the right side. I've got this fret press cow in my drill press. Just try to press them in real good and see if that fixes them. Sometimes you don't have to level and crown. Sometimes you just need to polish if you can get them in there right. Pretty simple operation. Just takes a little time to go over all of them, squish them in good. I didn't check the frets before we pressed them in for the simple fact that I already saw them sticking out. So let's see what they look like now here with the fret rocker. It's a little bit there. A little bit there. It's actually not too bad. They're two little tiny rocks so far. Got a lot right there. See that one? Look at that. All right, so they got to be level and crown. We're going to replace these tuners anyway, so let's take them off before we do our fret work so the neck will sit flat. Now it sits nice and flat while I'm working. Now I got some 220 on this 14 inch radius block. I have the block, so I'm gonna go ahead and use it. You know what I mean? I could use my file, which I do all the time, but since I have the block, we'll use this. You can get these cheap on Amazon. I'll leave you a link if you wanna check them out. Now I'm not gonna scrub this little guitar too much because I'm sure these frets on this thing are super trash. I'm the everyman's repair guy. I just show you the easy way to do it. That's it. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get rid of these sharp fret edges with this sanding block, but I put a piece of 220 on top of it. This is a little bit rougher than I want. I'm going to put that 220 there. I'm just going to go across the side of the neck like this. Not really taking a lot of the wood or anything off, just trying to get those frets to not be so sharp. So I did the side with the 220. I'm gonna come back with some thousand. I'm also gonna do the tops of the frets with this. You guys never seen me do that, but sometimes I do it. On these cheap frets, just helps them out along the way. That should be good. Now I'll just put this right on my radius block. Go over the frets too. Just to help it 
with the crowning. Now, someone made a comment that I use cheap Amazon tools, but I've had every fret file and crowning file that you can possibly think of, and I, I have. The guys that have watched this channel for a long time have seen me with all of them. The tools that I use are the ones that work for me. It's just that simple. If you don't like these tools, don't worry about them, but if you want to try them, there's a link in the description. Now, I can't help but wonder what kind of wood this is. At first, I thought it was stained. But clearly it's not. If you know what kind of wood this is, put it in the comments. Because I'm clueless. Hold them up real good. Wow, that looks pretty good, don't it? Crazy. Wow. Wow, look at that wood, dude. Nice, huh? Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to think that the wood and the electric guitar matters in the tone. But I could promise you it don't. Now, that matters every bit in an acoustic. That I know for a fact, too. But electric guitar, if you haven't seen Jim Lil's video on that, I suggest you go watch it. Yeah, look at that cut wifey put on that thing. It's perfect, ain't it? <laughs> Alright, let's open up these pickups and see what we got in here. These are the Fender Tex Mex. They were only 79 bucks on Amazon. That's it. Alright. You can give you a little wiring diagram. Now I really like these little rubber pieces instead of springs. They're just way cooler. Yeah, them guys got some heft to them there. No tape. Straight copper on the metal. Yeah, he's nice and hefty too. Wow, look how short that wire is. The guy must have been mad. They must have cheated him out of his lunch break or something. Now, if you've never changed pickups, this is a super easy operation. Put that stuff on there like that. Take your pickup. Lay them on in there. Nice and tight fit there. 
Tighten it up. Now we can screw our pit guard back on. I need to plug the holes in the back of the neck before we put the fender tuners on because it doesn't use screws. I got this toothpick here, but you can see it's a little bit too big for the hole. So I'm just going to put it in my drill like that. Try to skinny it up a little bit. Just going to put a little drop of this glue in here. Start this guy off like this. Clip him. Drive him nice and flush. I'm going to repeat that five more times. Got them all plugged up. Going to use this file right here. Just to flat. Now to install these fender tuners, what I like to do is I put them in there. Then I hit the back of them with my hammer. Just nice and gently. I'm not beating the crap out of it or nothing. I'm just tapping on it. And then what that does is it leaves those two impressions there for my drill bit. You see that? I just do it on all of them. That leaves me a perfect already started hole punch. If you remember early on in the video, I was showing you how low the saddles had to be to have the strings down low. And that was causing the little bolts in the saddles to stick up into your hand. So we're going to shim it here and try to prevent that. And we're going to use a good shim. That's Ambrosia Flame Maple. Now the first thing I need to do is lengthen this short wire fender left me. To work with here. Got that all soldered up. We'll tape him up so he's not just floating around in there all raw wired. I'm just looking at this thing. And I think it looks cool now. But I'm going to leave the tone knob off. I just am. It's in the way. I'm going to go ahead and put a full size 250K in here. Now it's not a CTS pot, but it's better than what was in there. It's what I had laying around. Our Fender American tuners are staggered. So we don't need these. Here we are. It's all done. Didn't even get too many scratches during the whole ordeal, huh? <laughs> you know, didn't even get beat up. <laughs> Let's play it unplugged first. Turn it up a little. <laughs> Middle position. Definitely killer sounding now. Let's try the neck position. Now, what do you think about this little guitar? It's pretty dope to me. I'd take this out right now and gig it with a band. Now, I understand I'm a little different than you are when it comes to working on guitars. And I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm learning right along with you. So if there's anything you would have done differently to this little guitar, go on and put it in the comments. I had a bunch of you guys asking me about what I thought was a good stand that was worth the money. Well, I bought that stand right there about two years ago. It's been to a bunch of gigs with me, and the thing I like the most about this is if you loosen this and push it down, it stands it up straighter. If you let it come all the way up, it leans it back a little bit. For, you know, that guitar that always wants to lean out of the stand. 
I see they still got them on Amazon, so I'll put the link in the description for you guys asking. Now you probably think I'm crazy for doing all that to that little guitar. And I figure if one of you guys got a little kid under 10 or something that could use that, hit me up on Facebook or Instagram. I'll let you have it for what I got in it. As long as you let me see him unbox it and jam on it. And if you got a crappy guitar that you need fixed up that you can't afford to fix, send me a video of it. That's right. I said send me a video of it. Maybe I'll fix it up for you. Now I really appreciate you watching. Until next time, don't you touch my scar guitar. Don't you touch my scar guitar.